to be who? Your people. Mine? Uh, I mean, or maybe your people, but our passport energy. Our dome, our shansha. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the living legend, one and only, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. Sujai Ghosh's Kahani, who is here today with us, 
Anurag Basu's Barfi, Vikramadit Mohanwana's Lutera, Dibakar Banerjee's Detective Vyomkesh Bakshi, and Shudit Sarkar's Piku are some good examples spread up over the last decade. And if it's of any interest to you, by the end of the month I'm going to be here again shooting another film in Bengal uh, for almost a month and going to be produced by the wonderful Shujai Kosh. Despite, despite their culture-specific eccentricities and identities, cinema with Bengali backgrounds have always tended to espouse a pan-India character based on our time-tested values, the source of our core strengths as a society, and our tolerance of diversity in a fabric that is essentially a complex mosaic of various ethnic communities, classes, and sects. The vast middle class of this country has historically been held together by a common code of conduct. And this has been very powerfully showcased in Bengali culture. Therefore, movies, despite an essentially Bengali milieu, have helped our audience to understand larger concerns. Bengal filmmakers have had a huge advantage of dipping into a rich legacy of literature for inspiration. Novels by Sharad Chand Chatterjee and Rabindranath Tagore have been filmed time and again. Sharad Babu's Devdas and Parinita have a perennial appeal that celebrated filmmakers of the past like Pratamesh Barua, Biman Roy, and they have captured on screen in Hindi along with contemporary film directors like Sanjay Lila Bansali, Pratip Sarkar. Bengali filmmakers have often depended on the vast reservoir provided by Gurudev Rabindranath for inspiration. Films uh, like Sataji's Ray's Teen Kanya, Hari Bhai, Tapanshina's Shudita Pasha, Gulzar's, who later Gulzar adapted uh, into Lekin in Hindi, and Vita Parma Koshish Chokhe Bali, Noka Dubi, are some immediate uh, paradigms that express how Hindi and Bengali cinema have been correlated. Tagore's short story, Samapti, was also made in Hindi, as Upahar, in which Jaya worked. And it was directed by Sudhendra Roy, with whom I had the great honor to work also in a film which was later uh, selected for the Academy in Hollywood, with a film called Sodaga. And Sodaga was based on a short story by uh, the great writer Narendranath Mitra. The story was Rosh. Uh, let us not forget Tagore's famous story, Kabuliwan. It has been such a popular among the mother tongue Hindi as well as in Bengali. The comprehensive emotion of love in all its variegated shades has held these films together. Devdas's heartbreaking, unrequited love, the steady belief in love's labor not being lost by Lolita, the heroine of Parinita, or the affection of a fruit seller from Afghanistan for a little Bengali girl in Kabuliwala continue to fill our hearts with sympathy in our eyes, with tears. More recently, some Hindi films, like Mani Ratnam Zuba, set in Bengal, has most effectively reflected the social changes and the frustration of youth who are on the lookout for relevance to their existence. Anurag Basu's birthday, set in Darji, looks at the caring relationship between a mute youth and a mentally challenged girl, while detective based on one of Bengali literature's best-known sleuths, creates on celluloid a nostalgia of Calcutta during the last days of the British Raj, replete with gaslights and trams, and port rickshaws, and the shadowy mystique of the city's Chinatown. Kahani is a thriller with a spectacular climax, mounted during Kolkata's most famous festival, Durga Puja. On the other hand, Piku gently and humorously explores the relationship between a hypochondriac father and his harassed daughter in a typical Prabashi Bangali ambience that lifts the plot out of its parochial confines so that audiences from all over India identify with the characters. 
Ladies and gentlemen, these are contemporary instances. Indian cinema, however, has always been heavily influenced by Bengal's rich literature and cultural pragmatism, where a largely educated, pluralistic, and inclusive society has looked upon social disparities with concern. Thus, Bengal, from very early times, has urged the need to experience meaningful, life-enriching stories unfolding on the screen. Films from here have mattered because they have had an extraordinary understanding, sometimes by moving us closer to cultures, problems, and realities that are distant from those we know well. Our films in Hindi have seen a great transformation since the early 1930s that witnessed the emergence of three big banners in Indian cinema. They were Prabhat, Bombay Chokis, and the new theatres of Kolkata. The subject matter and treatment of films made by these studios constantly evolved reflecting changes in social and political concerns. But before films learned to talk, silence was the universal language that held diverse audiences together through the length and breadth of the country. Modern theatres in Kolkata were pioneers in a giant distribution corporation from studio which dominated India's silent movies. Their early features were mainly filmed plays directed by foreigners. Foreigners like C. Legrand, formerly a party man, and Giorgio Manilini from Rome, who directed Savitri in 1923. Ironically, Savitri was played by Rina de Ligioro, and Satyavan was played by Angelo Ferrari, both were Italian actors. Later, Madan employed Jyotis Banerjee, who introduced Kanan Baba to our films. Indra Sabha, the film Indra Sabha in Urdu, based on an opera written by Aga Hassan Amanat, was released by Madan Theatres in the year 1932. It was one of the earliest sound films made in India. The very next year after Alamara, which was the first Indian talkie film, it features over 70 songs and was 211 minutes long. Even now, Indra Sabha holds the world record for the most number of songs in any music ever made. Very few film aficionados are aware that Sairindri, produced by Kolkata's Prabhat Studios, was India's first color film. Processed in Germany in 1931, much before Surad Modi's Jhansi Kirani, which was made in 1951. Preceded by, of course, Lee Shantaram's hand-tinted Shakun. Mr. Aral Khenka, who owned Kolkata's East India Film Company, was the first Indian movie producer to screen a film at an international film festival. Sita, made by Devaki Bose in Hindi, with a stellar cast featuring Tiffy Raj Kapoor as Ram and in Hindi. And in the decade after its founding in 1931, unfortunately he was an aspiring actor as well, but his untimely death uh, could not make him pursue his, uh, his great passion. Unlike other studios, ladies and gentlemen, Sarkar of New Theatres had no ambition of making films or acting in them and gave his directors a free hand. The opportunity for creative freedom made new theatres a magnet for directors, actors and technicians with such names and you'll be absolutely surprised to know these names. P.C. Barwa, Devaki Bose, Hani Majumla, Kundan Lal Seg, Pahari Samya, Kanundi, Leela Desai, Prithvi Raj Kapoor, Nitin Bose, Mukul Bose, Biman Roy, Rai Chand Borak, Pankaj Malik, they were all on their roster. New theatres produced several Hindi films, including Mohabbat Ke Aansu, Zinda Laj, Subhakatara, all the social dramas released in 1932 and directed by Prem Kumar Authority. Mohabbat Ke Aansu starred Kundalal Segal in his debut role with Aftari Muradabadi, 
Mahajabeen, Ansari and Sadiq with the co-art of Salam Rajam. Ladies and gentlemen, Sagal had worked earlier as a railway timekeeper and a typewriter salesman. He had done some amateur singing, which was more in the form of bhajans and ghazals, which he had mastered on his own. On the basis of an impromptu amateur evening, he was finally noticed by Pankaj Malik and R.C. Gaurav, dons of music in those six year old Sagar to meet B. N. Sarkar at New Theatres. And a sensation was created overnight. Kundan Lal Sagar was in these cinemas, the first real superstar birthed in a studio in Kolkata. And along with another melodic sensation, Kanamba, they stormed into the hearts of audiences all over India through their acting and their singing. One of the most revolutionary innovations in Indian cinema, the recording of a song, recording of a song in a studio and playing it back at a shooting location for actors to lip sync it, took place for the first time in 1935 for the production of the new theatres Hindi Bengali Bengal Du Chao Bhagi Chakra. First time a song was recorded for lip sync to be done by artists. Until then, of course, as you know, songs like the dialogues were recorded live in front of the camera, often with the entire orchestra playing just out of the camera view. So when Devdas was made in 1935, directed by Nitin Bose, it became a stupendous hit in both Bengali and Hindi, with P.C. Barwa acting in the Bengali version and Kundalal Sayal essay the protagonist in the Hindi version. Mamsil, an adaptation of Sarat Chancharaji's Grihadaha, directed by Pramathesh Barrow, was released in 1936. Then the President of the film was released in 1937, directed by Nitin Bose, Vidya Pati in 1937, Street Singer in 1938. These were landmark films in Hindi, all coming out from this city of Kolkata. Kananbala songs like Mori Angana Me Aay Ali Mori Angana Me Aay Ali and the duets with KC Day and Vidya Pati were huge triumphs. Street Singer was Swani Majumdar's first and most famous Hindi film. Saigal and Kananbala became a, 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 a very famous pair. Saigal's now famous rending of Vajid Ali Shah's Bhairavi Tumri, Babur Mora Nayar Chuto Rijaya is still considered a classic. Perhaps many do not know that when Sagal sang Babur Mora, he requested Majumdar not to use his playback that had already been recorded, but to allow him to sing it live on the sets. So he sang the song with his peti on his neck, and the entire orchestra moved along with him in a truck, covered with some cloths to hide them from coming in front of the camera. That's how the El Sagat sang these songs. Nardati was perhaps one of the last Hindi films that, is, that was made out of New Theatre's table, released in 1940. And it is still remembered for the song, Yekona Jaya Sade Sade, which was sung by Pankajman. The essence of what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, is this, that even these early movies provided engagement with our world, a sublime transcendence lifted the audience up and out of the mundane. They had the capacity of instilling the most expansive definition of what it means to be a human, both complex and generous. They captured the deepest and fullest qualities of life in all its many huge diversity and continues to hold common time-tested tenets of compassion and plurality. These early films used entertainment as a language to speak to the audience across national, class, economic and racial lines and helped immensely in highlighting shared cultural values, idealistic aspirations and understanding of good and evil, the transformation of the everyday into the heroic and the mythic, the redemption of past mistakes, the finding of love and justice, and also, most importantly, the 
banishment of communal prejudices and hatred. At the start of his career, Bimal Roy, working as a cameraman for New Theatres, was keen to don the director's hat. He met with B.N. Sarkar, requested his permission. Sarkar agreed, but with one condition. Roy could only use leftovers from reels of other films. Roy actually took up the challenge and made his first film with only cut pieces. The year was 1944. The film was Kudai and Pati which went on to become a smash hit, despite having a rank newcomers. Roy later we remade it in Hindi, in Hamrahi in 1945. And very few of you will remember today that Bimal Roy used Rabindranath Tagore's Jonathan Mono evocatively in Udayar Party and Hamrahi, much before it became our national anthem in 1950. Bimal Roy may have moved to Mumbai later, but his oeuvre was heavily influenced by an innate Bengaliness that became both enduring and universal, rich with a flavour of social realism. Dobi Hazameen spoke of the travails of Shamun the peasant, based on a Bengali short story by Subodh Ghosh, Sujata, explored the situation of caste in India. Bandani, based on a Bengali novel Tamasi uh, by Jarasan, tells the story of a woman prisoner serving life imprisonment for murder. Parak is a satirical fairy tale set in rural India, replete with wicked people, good people, a damsel in distress, a hero, and a fairy godfather. While Sujata and Bandani established Newton as one of the finest actresses, Parak, Sadhana's second movie after Love and Shinla, also showcased her acting prowess. Apparently, when she turned up on the sets of Parak's sporting the famous Sadhana Fringe, Bimal Roy thought she looked too glamorous to play a village girl, penned by Salil Chaudhary, who also scored the music of that film. She reportedly used hair gel to remove that famous fringe of hers, enough for the girl to look like a common uh, Bengali character, and apparently it worked. And we had a beautiful Sadhana giving a natural and sensitive performance and lit the evergreen song, O Sajna Bharata Bahar So wonderfully rendered by Lataji Lakamandeshi. Guru Dutt, one of Hindi cinema's most applauded film directors, spent his early childhood in Bhavanipur here in Kolkata and grew so close to Bengali culture and intellect that in his film Kagas Ke Pool, he paid a silent tribute to the studio era of Kolkata by showing one of his characters in the balcony of the theatre where Vidya Patika, a 1937 new theatre's film, was being watched by a packed audience. Beginning his career as a telephone operator and then graduating to a choreographer before he ventured into movies as a full-fledged director, Guru Das Piyasa was set in Kolkata. Focuses, focusing on the universal themes of love, pain, and greed and hope. His films are marked by a certain subtle nostalgia, most evident in Sahib Bibi of Kulam and the fading away of Bengal Zamindari refinements. Rishikesh Mukherjee, who was part of Bimal Roy's technical team and played godfather to both Jay and me, edited most of his films, later went on to direct his own movies. And the flavor remained predominantly Bengal. Whether it was Bhavarshi or whether it was Anand that introduced the beloved Bhavi Mushan, Chupke Chupke or Anupama that presented us a near artistic heroine, a touch of Bengal wafted softly through each frame of all his movies. Even a commercial film director like Shakti Sam delved into the Bengali milieu in his films Aradhana or Amar Prem championed the cause of a prostitute with a golden heart and her selfless sacrifice in sheltering not only a lonely lover but also a child ill-treated by his stepmother. Ladies and gentlemen, films remain the most pervasive form of communication and entertainment in the contemporary world. And now more than ever, now more than ever, ladies and gentlemen, we need to talk to each other, to listen to each other, 
and understand how we ourselves in relation to the world and cinema is the best medium for doing this. Bengal's strength has always been its intellectual integrity and immense open-mindedness that both writers and filmmakers have highlighted on the screen through the decades. I am delighted that these age-old values are once again being reflected in Indian cinema through stories and characters from Bengal, embracing its cultural idiosyncrasies with gentle humor, but constantly emphasizing its deep belief in equality and social justice. And so when we sit down to watch a film today, the sensual experience of sight and sound is familiar, but the cerebral one, the story itself can take us anywhere. In this sense, films with a Bengali background are both an old friend and a new adventure. By looking at films that capture a different ethnicity, we give a window to what makes people all over the globe different and also what makes them similar. This essential understanding rises above stereotypes and acknowledges both the unity and the diversity in humanity. I want to quote now one of the verses from Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore's Chandrakarman, exemplifying Bharat Mata's unconditional love for all her children. The first verse, ladies and gentlemen, is our national anthem. But the other verses are just as relevant in holding together India's diversity and equality at a time, ladies and gentlemen, when cultures are being questioned and prejudices against communities are dividing the world. Rabindranath Tagore wrote, Khor Timiru Khano Nibiru Nishite Piritu Morchito Deshi Jagratu Chilotago Abichur Mongol Noto Noyana Amendeshi Du Shakne Atomki Rokko Korine Onki Sneomoyu Tuni Mata Jono Bono Duk Kayo Kajoyaki Har Harki Vidata Joyaki 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 and the night was dark and utterly bleak when our land lay sick in a fevered soul. Oh, loving mother, you held us close and shielded us from times and hopes. Yours, lowered but ever watchful eyes, so pure, so faithfully sanctified, granted us our special boon. You, the remover of all agony, you, the guardian of our destiny. Jay, 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 the victory for our fear. Thank you so much. Before I depart, uh, um, no, today I don't have another story with the Chador. Um, I've been mentioning quite often earlier on the matter of Bengal embracing its cultural idiosyncrasies with some kind of gentle humor. To me, that has always exemplified the common ordinary Bengali. And uh, to add to what Jaya said, uh, when I was uh, working here in Kolkata in the early 60s, um, that's the time when I realized and came close to the common man, the common Bengali. And realize that you may not believe this, but you know, every Bengali is an institution by himself. He is the most intelligent person. He will enter into any kind of debate, have a conversation, and will be able to put across his point as convincingly as some very learned person. He knows everything. I applaud that. Their intelligence is something that I encountered when I used to travel by tram uh, from Toligach to Esplanade to look for a job. So while we are traveling the tram and shaking and there are lots of people and you hear a conversation. Hey Dada, come on! <laughs> A 
and the other person goes, hey, Konoro Koncho. <laughs> because if he says, ki dala, come on, and he will say, ah, bhalo, bhalo, attract a secret thing. <laughs> when he will encounter him, let's say on the road he's walking, and he's walking, and he sees his friend coming to him. <laughs> and wait for the friend to pass by, then when he's gone, he will go and pick the cigarette up again. <laughs> because if he meets him, he may ask him for another cigarette. Mamta Di, there is a reason why I'm saying this to you. Next time you call me and say, Arutab Ji, Aapni uh, Kyaon? I will say, Hey, Koro Koncho. Because... I don't want you to call me again here yeah, next year. <laughs> if I say I'm in Bharati, then you will call me again. <laughs> I will have nothing more to say. You know, for three years I've been so much richer than Bengali cinema. <laughs> and uh, my research team and me are now without anything more to say. So I would rather actually be sitting where all these lovely people are and, and listen to some of the people that you invite on stage. That was uh, my little request to you, Mamta Deva. Thank you so much, once again. You are quite an exceptional lady. Everyone knows that. But may I also say, you are one that represents great humanity and has a great amount of humanness. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Richard Knight, Satan. And now, I must...